Ah, yes. I've been expecting you. I know why you're here. You want to learn how to make stuff levitate, fly, and soar across the sky. Hmm. Yes. You've come to the right place. So let's begin by flying into unity. Okay, before we go into unity, I'll quickly show you what the flying heck we're going to end up with. Uh, we're going to make cool flying watermelons, extreme and very dangerous bombs, and also very sharp arrows, and all the effects as well, of course. You don't have to make everything as pixely as I do, but um, I'm a little bit of a pixel art connoisseur, if I do say so myself. Uh, come follow along with me, you will definitely learn some cool tricks. Yeah. So, as you can see, I've already got a little scene opened up. It uh, simply consists of this dude right here, uh, with a dude script attached to him, which makes him able to move, uh, rotate his gun towards the mouse, and it animates him when he runs. And finally, it also flips the sprites so he faces towards the mouse. And that is amazing. I highly recommend that you download this project because then you can follow along with me. Uh, and that would be very cool. I'll put a small guide in the description telling you how to go about downloading it from GitHub. And we will, of course, return to this dude script later on when we're going to make him actually able to shoot. So stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an empty game object. And this is going to be our melon. So the way we're going to structure these flying objects is we're going to have the empty game object, which has two children, uh, a body and a shadow. The body is going to be the green melon and the shadow is going to be the shadow of the melon. And the body will move vertically while the object slash shadow will move relative to the ground. The bomb and the arrow are also structured in this manner. So let's create the, the body of the melon. Uh, I've got a very simple sprite here, which is just a pixel. And we're going to make a melon out of this. Let's call this body. And let's just move the dude out of the way. And I'll make this melon eight by eight pixels big. And let's give it a good color. I think that's good. And let's create the shadow. So control D to duplicate. And let's call it shadow. And let's give it a completely black color and turn down the alpha and set the order and layer to be minus something. So now it is behind our uh, melon body. Perfect. Okay, so let's uh, make this a prefab. So drag it into the prefabs folder. And now we got a melon prefab. Perfect. Now we can move on to create the fake height uh, object script. So go over to scripts right click create and c sharp script fake height object and let's drag it on to our melon there we go and let's open it up all right so let's start out with some variables we're gonna need some references to the transforms we're dealing with so public transform uh trans object and transform trans body and trans shadow all right cool and now let's create a variable for the ground velocity ground velocity and that's going to be a vector 2 and then we will need one for our vertical velocity and that's just going to be a float and at last we're going to need a public bool called is grounded and we will of course use that to check whether or not we are grounded so let's create our functions and we'll create our update function 
we're gonna call a function called update position inside of this function. So void update position. And inside this function, we will update the position of our body and we will update the velocities according to uh, another variable, <laughs> which is going to be our gravity. And we will set this to uh, minus 10. I don't know. All right, cool. We're going to need another function and this is going to be public void initialize and it will take some parameters so a vector 2 called ground velocity and a float called vertical velocity hmm very interesting and we will call this uh, when we instantiate our fake height object so when we make our dude shoot uh, our melon, for example, we will call this initialize function and then we will pass in what velocity the object should have and then we're going to set them in here and kind of initialize the the fake height flying process. So let's set uh, this dot ground velocity equals to ground velocity and this dot vertical velocity to vertical velocity and this basically means that we are grabbing these up here and not these i think it would be a good time to make our dude able to shoot uh our object now so we so we can test it so let's go into our dude script and in here we're going to create a new function called shoot and in here we're going to check if we press the left mouse button, so if input dot get uh, mouse button down is zero, and then we will instantiate our melon. So we need a reference to our melon prefab. So let's put that up here somewhere. Uh, let's call this weapon weaponry. Uh, Public game object. Uh, uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, let's call it uh, melon. And we will also need a public vector two, and we're gonna call this ground dispense velocity. Velocity, and we'll need a public vector two vertical dispense velocity and. Down here, we will instantiate our melon uh, at the tip of our gun. So I think we've got that transgun tip dot position, and the rotation is going to be quaternion dot identity. All right, so now we are instantiating our melon. So let's see if we can get that to work. We can actually delete this melon right here. So delete it and let's drag the melon prefab over to the melon on our dude now we'll of course make some sort of weapon system so we don't have to make a bomb and arrow for this we will do it with our scriptable objects which is very very handy but we will save that for later and now let's check if our melon gets instantiated when we press our mouse button and it doesn't and that is of course because we we aren't actually calling this function so let's go up to our update function and say shoot perfect yay we are instantiating melons perfect okay and you might have noticed we aren't actually initializing the melon. As you can see, we've got the initialize function, but we're not calling it. So let's do that. So we have to make a reference to the instantiated melon. So let's call it game object instantiated melon and set it equals to the melon that gets instantiated. 
and let's call the initialize function in our fade height object script. So instantiated melon dot get component fake height object dot initialize. Uh, so our ground velocity is going to be the direction which our gun points in. So trans gun dot right. And we're going to multiply this by random dot range ground dispense velocity dot x and ground dispense velocity dot y. So now we're adding a little bit of randomness, which is very nice. And we will plug in random dot range. We're going to put in vertical dispense velocity dot x and vertical dispense velocity dot y. And that is it. So now we are initializing our uh, fake height object as well. So and we can check if it gets initialized. So let's go into Unity. Okay, and let's set some sort of range right here. So 10 to 15 and 10 to 20. All right, press play and shoot a melon. And let's check and we can see that the ground velocity is this and the vertical velocity is almost 15. So, you know, it, it gets initialized and that's very good. All right, so now let's make the melon move. Let's get back into our script in the update position function. And in here, we're going to say trans object dot position plus equals to ground velocity times time dot delta time. Uh, now we're multiplying by time dot delta time to make the movement speed frame rate independent. So that's quite important. We're getting an error because C sharp is complaining that we are trying to do something with a vector three and vector two. So let's cast this to a vector three like this. All right, cool. So let's check what happens. All right, press play. Isn't it amazing, guys? Wow. We made the melons move. Um, let's try to increase the speed. So uh, 100 to 125. All right, all right. So now let's make the actual body move vertically. And we will do that also in the update position function. We will say vertical velocity plus equals to gravity times time dot delta time. And let's set trans body dot position plus equals to a new vector three zero point vertical velocity on the y axis. And let's also multiply this by time dot delta time. All right, let's see how this looks. Let's uh, increase the vertical dispense velocity to something crazy. Wow, are you guys seeing this? This is amazing, right? Flying watermelons. Now the gravity is of course uh, out of whack. So let's let's increase the gravity to something like minus 100. Now that wasn't quite enough. So let's say minus 300 maybe. And hey, that that that's almost it. Now we just need to uh, stop them from falling through the ground. So let's do that. We're going to need a new function for this. So let's say void check ground hit. So we're going to check if we hit the ground and we're going to do this by saying if uh, our trans body dot position dot y is under our trans object dot position dot y and we will check if we are actually flying. So let's check if we're not grounded. If all this is true, then we will say is grounded equals to true. And when we're grounded, we don't want to move our 
trans body. So let's put a if we aren't grounded. So if we're not grounded, then we want to uh, add to the vertical position. All right, perfect. Let's see if this works. And it didn't work. <laughs> And that is, of course, because we didn't call the actual check ground hit function. So let's do that after the update position function up here. So check ground hit. And as you can see, it kind of works, but sometimes the melon is a little bit under the shadow and we don't want that to happen. So we're going to fix that by doing this. We will set the trans body dot position equals to trans object dot position. Uh, that way, we make sure that the that the body will be positioned correctly when it's on the ground. All right, perfect. It kind of works now, isn't it beautiful? I think it's absolutely beautiful. So the next thing we're going to do is crucial. We're going to add a function which gives us the ability to call any kind of function whenever we hit the ground. So we can, for example, add a function that makes the melon stick to the ground or makes the melon bounce or uh, spawn some kind of little explosion. And we're going to do that right now. So let's jump into our script. We're going to add another function and we're going to call this function ground hit and this function is going to get called whenever we hit the ground that is in here so let's call ground hit all right when we hit the ground we want to be able to call any kind of function so the way we're going to do this is using unity events so we will go to the top of the script and type in using unity engine dot events and then we will add a variable called public unity event on ground hit event we will invoke this event whenever we hit the ground so let's do it down here uh, on ground hit event dot invoke perfect and so in the inspector, we can assign any kind of function to the uh, on ground hit event. So let's click on the plus sign and drag over the melon so we can access the, the script. And we can, for example, call all of these, but let's add our own. Uh, so let's add a function called public void stick and make sure it's public because if it isn't public then it will not be visible in the inspector so public void stick we're gonna set the ground velocity equals to vector 2.0 uh yeah i think that's all so let's see what happens so we've dragged over our melon and now let's access this function by going to fake height object and stick as you can see, our melon sticks to the ground now, and we can add all sorts of uh, functions that we can call when we hit the ground. So now let's add a bounce function just for fun. Now our melon isn't going to bounce in the end. It's of course going to make a small little cute explosion. So let's just create our bounce function to begin with. So public void bounce. What we're going to do is we're going to call initialize again and we're going to initialize with our current ground velocity so let's just pop in ground velocity then we're gonna put in some sort of vertical velocity now i think it's best if we uh, have a reference to the last velocity that we initialized our object with so let's add a another variable up here and call this private float last vertical uh, velocity uh, and initial 
vertical velocity. And let's set this in here to be uh, last uh, equals to the vertical velocity. Uh, this right here. And let's just pop that in here and let's see what happens. Now we of course have to switch the stick event out with bounce. And as you can see, it doesn't work. And why is that? So let's check uh, what's going on with our melon. So let's just choose one of these. We can see that they are grounded. And when they're grounded, we're not adding anything to the vertical velocity. So let's make sure when we initialize these objects that they are not grounded anymore. So let's say is grounded equals to false. And now this problem should be fixed. Yay! Now our melons bounce. Now that's perfect. Absolutely amazing. Are you guys seeing this? <laughs> now let's add a factor to the bounce. So, so we can uh, make the melon bounce a little bit less each time. So let's say uh, float and let's call this division factor. And we will just divide the last initial vertical velocity with division factor. Fantastic. Now in our melon, let's uh, set the division factor to two. So the uh, bounce velocity will be divided by two each time. As you can see, it uh, bounces a little bit less each time. Very cool indeed. I think we should make the melon slow down when it hits the ground. So let's add a function for that. So public public void slow down uh, ground velocity. And we will take a division factor as well. And let's set the ground velocity equals to ground velocity divided by division factor. Perfect. And let's call that function as well. So we can make the melon bounce and we can slow it down also. Slow down ground velocity. And the division factor, let's set that to two and maybe the bounce factor to 1.25. As you can see, the they're slowing down now. And that is what we want. Isn't it amazing, guys? We can add whatever the heck we want. And that is amazing. We can also add another component and call a function from that component. And that is fantastic. So let's create a component uh, called debris dispenser. And let's attach that to our melon. And in here, let's make a public function called public void dispense debris. And let's call that whenever we bounce. Let's drag over our melon and go down to debris dispenser and dispense debris. Now we of course have to make this uh, dispense debris function, but we will do that in the next episode, guys. Thank you for watching and see you in the next part.